If you've already seen the exhibition in Norwich Cathedral Library, you will have met some people and places connected with the reign of Queen Elizabeth I and her visit to Norwich in 1578. There are a number of points in the cathedral which illustrate these connections, so let's have a wander around the cathedral to look at them. In the exhibition, we have a piece of music by Osbert Parsley, who died in 1585, having been a singing man in the cathedral for 50 years. On the north side of the nave is the monument which was erected in his memory, and the inscription on it gives us much of the information we have about his life. It reads, Here lies the man whose name, in spite of death, renowned lives by blast of golden fame whose harmony survives his vital breath, whose skill no pride did spot, whose life no blame, whose low estate was blessed with quiet mind, as our sweet chords with discords mixed be, whose life in seventy and four years entwined, as falleth mellowed apples from the tree, whose deeds were rules, whose words were verity, who here a singing man did spend his days, full fifty years in our church melody, his memory shines bright whom thus we praise. The memorial was restored in memory of Arthur Henry Mann after his death in 1929. He had been a chorister at Norwich Cathedral and learnt to play the organ under the then organist Zechariah Buck before becoming organist of King's College, Cambridge. A little further along the nave, in the north wall, is what used to be a doorway with an elaborately carved frame. It now looks like a niche, particularly as it houses a bust of a former bishop, Percy Mark Herbert. Its Elizabethan interest is that it was the doorway into the Green Yard, an open space to the north of the cathedral where sermons could be preached. The Green Yard was overlooked by the bishop's palace and during her visit Elizabeth looked out upon entertainment performed in the Green Yard. Moving into the east end of the cathedral, we'll go up the steps into the presbytery, the area in which the high altar stands. From the row of diamond shapes downwards, the surface de It was in this area that Elizabeth sat during the service that she attended. This position meant that she was opposite the burial place of her great grandfather. One of the windows in the ambulatory, the walkway around the presbytery, contains some glass of interest to our Elizabethan trail. It's the window to the right of the entrance to the Jesus Chapel. The largest coat of arms in the right George Gardiner was buried in the cathedral. His tomb can still be seen in the Opposite Dean Gardiner's burial place is the tomb of John Parkhurst. Parkhurst was Bishop of Norwich 1560 to 1575. He was involved in one of the significant religious books of Elizabeth's reign, the new translation of the Bible, which became known as the Bishop's Bible. It was known as this because various bishops were asked to translate the different books of the Bible,
To end our tour, we'll go out into the cloisters. A series of coats of arms are painted onto the north wall of the cloisters. The originals were painted here to commemorate the Queen's visit in 1578 and represented her and some of those who accompanied her on her visit. Those arms were in a poor state but still visible when local antiquarian mackerel recorded them sometime in the late 17th or early 18th century as being the arms of Howard, Duke of Norfolk, Clinton, The first arms we meet are those of Thomas William Cook of Hokham, 3rd Earl of Leicester. He corresponds to Dudley in the original scheme. Next we come to Bacon. The boar on the crest is the clue to the name. This visual play on words is known in heraldry as canting. It is assumed that Nicholas Bacon must have been present in 1578 because he was knighted then by the Queen. He was made a baronet in 1611. Indeed this These are the arms of Henry Francis Hope, Pelham Clinton Hope, 8th Duke of Newcastle under Lyne, who is descended from the 1578 Clinton, Edward, 1st Earl of Lincoln. In the bottom left We come now to Hastings. The arms we see now are those of Albert Edward Delaval Astley, 21st Baron Hastings. According to Dean Cranage, the connection was that this Lord Hastings was descended from Elizabeth, daughter of the 15th Baron Hastings, who died without male heir in 15. Queen Mary, who was by the time of the Restoration Queen Mother, restored the next bay, so these are her arms. The Royal Arms of the United Kingdom, because she was The much simpler Royal Arms are those used by the monarch from about 1405 to 1603. The third and last shield to include the royal arms is that of Queen Elizabeth, the Queen Mother, although at the time of the restoration work she was the Queen Consort. Gascoigne Cecil is the contemporary descendant of Cecil, that is William Cecil, 1st Lord Burley, a picture of him is on display in the library exhibition, who was one of Queen Elizabeth's principal advisers and was most certainly with her in 1578. James Edward Hubert Gascoigne Cecil was in the 1930s 4th Marquess of Salisbury. Next arms are those of Bernard Marmaduke Fitzalan Howard, 
16th Duke of Norfolk and Earl Marshal of England. His ancestor, present in 1578, was Philip Howard, son of Thomas, 4th Duke of Norfolk. It seems that Elizabeth was his guest for dinner in his house built on the site of St Leonard's Priory on what is now Gas Hill, just across the river from Bishopsbridge. The fourth duke had been attainted and executed. The Howard arms appear next to the arms of Lothian, which are the last arms on the wall. Specifically, these are the arms of the 11th Marquess of Lothian, We hope you have enjoyed this brief glimpse of some of the Elizabethan history of Norwich Cathedral. If you haven't already visited the library exhibition, you are welcome on Tuesdays, Wednesdays and Thursdays, 10am to 4pm, 